Rev up your engines. Paul Rodriguez. Paul says, Scotty, I have a two-door 97 Honda Accord LX that has 280,000 miles. It's a fun little car. Do you think it's worth keeping and restoring the engine, or should I scrap it and let it go? Okay, that's a very good question. Those in 97 were excellent cars. Honda's always had a little bit of weakness with their automatic transmissions. There's no arguing that, but that one had a decent transmission on it, too. We have to decide, what are you planning on doing with the car? Because, let's face it, the thing is 22 years old. It's got 280,000 miles. Now, if you're thinking you're going to drive that thing another 280,000 miles and not have any problems, no, that's not going to happen. But if you're going to use that as a secondary car, say it's your work car and you got a nice car for you and the wife if you're married, yeah, go right ahead and keep it up. They don't make them like they used to. That thing can last a really long time. But don't think it's going to be a trouble-free car from now on. As an example, I got a customer that's got uh, an Accord that he bought used. He uh, loved the car. It's even older than that. It's, it's, it's eight years older than that. But the thing is nickel and diamond in the death because he's using it as a regular car, everyday transportation. EAC brakes. and I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going to go wrong when they get that old. If it's your only car, I'd say I scrap it and get rid of it. But if you want to keep it kind of as a toy, go right ahead. Daniel Heraldo says, Scotty, what's the best car? A Toyota with a manual transmission or a Honda with a manual transmission? Well, those are both great cars without it, with manual transmissions. There's no arguing that. But it'd depend what you wanted to do. Like the Toyotas, they generally last the longest with the least amount of repairs. But you take the Hondas with the standard transmission, they also last a long time, but they're a little bit zippier cars. They're a little bit more fun to drive. I get a lot of customers that say, Scotty, I don't want to buy a Toyota because I find them boring. And I just say, well, if you think something lasts forever and doesn't have problems, it's boring, go right ahead. You know, go get a Fiat that'll fall apart and be fun to drive until it breaks. The Hondas are generally a zippier manufacturer. You know, Honda was originally a motorcycle company for speed, where Honda, where Toyota was always in the cars. Now, it depends what you want. They're both great cars. If you want a little more sportiness, Get the Honda, but if you want something that's going to last the longest with the least amount of repairs, get the Toyota. AC Jr. says, do brake quiet sprays or disc brakes really work when you spray them on your pads? To some extent, yes, and to some extent, no. Here's the main thing about brake pads. The main problem you have with modern day brake pads are, when I was a young mechanic, everything was asbestos. Asbestos, of course, causes lung cancer, so they banned it. But it was a very good material that could take heat without cracking, and not make much noise. Today, we have all kinds of different brake materials that they use. If you use a quality, high quality brake pad, like say, Akabono brake pads, it doesn't really matter what you put on the pads. They're so well made, they've got backing already built in, told me they're Teflon or stainless steel, and the material's so good that they don't make any noise. If you go out and buy the cheapest brake pad you can get your hands on, yeah, you'd want to put some of that spray on the backing plate to keep it from vibrating and making squeaking noises, but, that said, a cheaper brake pad on a worn rotor is going to make noise. You could spray it till the cows come home, it's still going to make noise. Most of the noise is created by the brake pad against the rotor. Now, if you buy good pads like Agabono, a lot of times you can get away with just changing the pads and not changing the rotor. But if you use cheaper brake pads, you're going to have to change the rotors too because it's going to have to be on a perfectly flat surface not to make any noise. Now you know the truth about it. Mark Izzo says, what's the best toolbox setup and tool chest for professionals like myself? Well, you know, it depends on what you want to spend, but my advice, don't waste your money on these name brand stuff like Snap-on. All these steel tool chests, as long as they're made out of steel and are solid, and when you pull out the drawers, you see that they're sliding on metal not on plastic junk that's going to break and fall apart. And don't ever think about getting anything made out of particle board. But if you get solid steel ones, it doesn't really matter who you buy them from. You want to check them out first. But, I mean, I've gone to Harbor Freight Tools and looked at their tool chests. And they're pretty solid made if you buy the good ones that they have. There's nothing wrong with buying theirs. They can be solid. Just make sure they're solid steel and that they got good wheels that are solid on them and not some flimsy plastic junk. If they're solid made, you don't have to spend the big bucks. I've seen ones that were $1,000 and I looked at ones that people were selling for $250,300. And the $250,300 ones, the ones I got in the garage, I got a motley assortment of stuff from over 
over the years. But I got to say, I'm happiest with the cheapest one that I bought at Harbor Freight that was only $200 something dollars. It's held up and has no problems either, as long as there's steel. You don't want to get plastic junk ones. If there's plastic in them all over the place, go someplace else because all the weight of the tools is going to break that plastic stuff. If you don't like the name on it, heck, put your own name. Get a little thing made, take theirs off, and you know, put on a chrome name of whatever you want, your own name or whatever. Have some fun with it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.